Welcome to Electro Online, and in this video we're going to take a look at what we call polar equations, equations in polar coordinates. Now, to help us understand them, we're going to convert an equation in Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates, an equation we're very familiar with. Let's say y equals 2x squared, which we know to be a parabola. So how does that convert into polar coordinates? Well, remember that x is equal to r times the cosine of theta, and y is equal to r times the sine of theta. If we then take those two and plug them in here for y, we get y then would be r times the sine of theta is equal to 2 times x squared, and x being r times the cosine of theta quantity squared. So simplifying that, you get the following. We get r times the sine of theta is equal to 2 times r squared times the cosine squared of theta. Well, right away we see an r on the left side and an r squared on the right side, so this r cancels out one of those r's, and now we have to solve this equation for r because we want to write r in terms of theta. So that means we're going to go ahead and turn the equation around, so we have 2 times r times the cosine square of theta is equal to the sine of theta, and divide both sides by 2 times the cosine square of theta, so we get r is equal to the sine of theta, divided by 2 times the cosine square of theta. So that means that this equation right here, y equals 2x squared, could be converted to the equation r equals sine of theta divided by 2 times the cosine square of theta. Now, how do we use that equation? Well, here, what this equation means is you give me any value for x, and I will give you a particular value for y. In other words, give me the x-coordinate, and I'll give you the y-coordinate at that point. So let's say that we want to find y when x is equal to 2, which is equal to 2 times 2 squared, which means this is equal to 2 times 4, which is equal to 8. In other words, when x equals 2, y equals 8, so we go 1, 2, and then we go far enough up on the y-axis and we find the point on the y-axis right here where y equals 8 when x equals 2. So there's the y-axis and there's the x-axis. So that's how we use Cartesian coordinates. You give me a value for x, I'll give you the value for y. Well, the same value can be found by taking polar coordinates. In other words, give me the value for theta and I will give you the value for r. So, I don't know what the appropriate theta is in this particular case, but let's say I want to find r when theta is equal to, let's say, 45 degrees. Now, of course, we don't typically write it in terms of degrees. We write it in terms of radians. So in other words, we go, what is r equal to when theta is equal to pi divided by 4? Well, let's go ahead and plug that in here. So therefore, we have the sine of pi divided by 4 divided by 2 times the cosine of pi divided by 4 quantity squared. So that's this equation. We're solving for r, but in this case, theta is a particular value of pi over 4. Let's plug in the value and see what we get. So this is equal to the sine of pi over 4, which is the square root of 2 over 2, divided by 2 times the quantity, the square root of 2 over 2 quantity squared, because the cosine of pi over 4 squared is indeed that. All right, so let's simplify that a little bit. So we have this divided by that squared, so this becomes 1, like that. And then the 2 and the 2 cancels out, that becomes 1. So this becomes 1 over the square root of 2, or if I multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 2, so I want to rationalize the denominator, so times the square root of 2 over the square root of 2, that means it's square root of 2 divided by 2. And that would be the r, that would be the distance from the origin to the point on the graph when the angle theta is pi over 4. So here we can see that there's a lot of analogy between polar coordinates and Cartesian coordinates, and we also need to be able to convert. So if you're given a Cartesian coordinate equation, we should be able to convert it to a polar coordinate equation, and then we should also be able to evaluate that for any value of theta that we get. In other words, give me a value for theta, and I give you a value for r. We could turn the equation around. We can say, well, solve this for x in terms of y, then plug in a y and give me an x. We could do the same over here. We could solve this for theta in terms of r. Give me an r and I'll give you the theta. It's a little bit more difficult to do, and I'll show you some examples later on on how to do that. Now here, it's simply good enough to see it like this. Now, one more thing. Let's see what r would be when theta is equal to 0. Let's try that. r when theta is equal to 0 is equal to, and of course what we're going to do is plug in 0 here and 0 there and see what we get. So in that case, we get the sine of 0 
divided by 2 times the cosine of 0 quantity squared. And of course, the sine of 0, that is 0, and the cosine of 0 is 1, so it would be uh, 0 divided by 2, which is equal to 0, which means when the angle is 0, pointing in this direction, my radius or my radius arm, my distance to the point on the graph would be 0. That would be this point right here. Now, what happens when the angle becomes bigger and bigger and bigger? Well, eventually, the angle becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, and we'll be looking for a point on the graph way up there. So when the angle becomes close to pi over 2, r will become very, very large. For example, let's say that r is equal to, or r is going to be evaluated when theta is equal to, let's say, 89 degrees. Let's, let's do it in degrees instead of radians, and we'll go ahead and use our calculator for that. So we have the sine of 89 degrees divided by 2 times the cosine of 89 degrees quantity squared. And let's see what value of r we get, and I think r will be actually quite large. So we have 89, take the sine of that, divide by 89, take the cosine of that and square that equals, and now divide by 2 equals, and I get 1,641, 1,641. In other words, if I'm looking at an angle of 89 degrees, like this, then I have to go really far up to connect with a point on the graph right there. Notice y or r will be 641 that was almost equal to y being 641 that would be really high up in the graph what happens now when when theta becomes 90 degrees when theta equals 90 degrees what other words are when theta equals pi over 2 okay that means that is equal to the sine of pi over 2 divided by 2 times the cosine of pi divided by 2 quantity squared, and that would be equal to 1 divided by 2 times 0, and that would be infinity. Oh, why does that work? Well, it turns out that when the angle is 90 degrees, you will never hit a point anywhere on the graph because the parabola will continue to go outward away from the y-axis, and there's no way you're going to find a point on the graph, and therefore r becomes infinity, which indeed makes sense. Only when it's exactly equal to pi over 2 or 90 degrees with infinity, if it's anything less than that, the value of r may be very large, but not infinity. And so it's interesting how to look at evaluating a graph in polar coordinates versus the Cartesian coordinates, but that's how we do it. And once you get the hang of that, it doesn't, it's not quite that confusing. That's what I was trying to say. It's not so confusing once you get some practice. So we're going to show you a bunch of examples so you can feel comfortable with converting from polar to Cartesian, Cartesian coordinate, and then evaluate these in polar coordinates. So stay tuned if you're interested in this.